Hello, everyone. Um, I am Anna Shenyan, uh, and I am a CEO at Five Prey. Uh, we are building a platform for um, engineers, uh, AI engineers, and data scientists. Basically, currently, it is supporting for a development of uh, com data sets in data, uh, computer vision. Uh, just a couple of uh, words about me. Uh, I am a physicist in my background, and uh, my background also, have, before starting this uh, uh, company, we, uh, I was working in the current design automation company. Then we have spent up two more companies uh, in AI, whatever. So this is new company and we have been launched about uh, three uh, months. And uh, this uh, topic contains some information, some small research that was done in our uh, company. Uh, the main idea here is how we can use uh, data analysis to uh, reduce the data sets. Why we need to reduce the data sets. So basically, uh, here we go uh, with uh, what is uh, overfitting, underfitting the reasons, the redundant data, uh, how we can select the samples from our data set. Uh, and finally, we'll analyze CIFAR 10 and uh, figure out how we can reduce this uh, data set to keep the same performance. How much is intelligent AI? Of course, it depends on the data set that uh, we, uh, it is trained on. Yeah? Because the, the only the data set quality mainly defines uh, the, our final AI model quality. And, um, and so it means that we need a lot of data. And basically, uh, the data uh, is required for uh, deep, learning, uh, deep learning models. The supervised data is required uh, in most of uh, the, uh, cases when the, uh, we are working with production level uh, neural networks. And of course, uh, as engineers, we always meet the same uh, problem, uh, bias and variance um, trade-off. And uh, where it is again it refers to our data sets, our data. I uh, want to one more time mention about the problem with the data is that with the eventual with supervised learning, we need to uh, augment the data. Sorry, uh, we need to label the data to clean it. And if needed, we need to lay, augment it. And then we need to train. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, in in, in uh, the uh, trade-off of uh, variance and bias, it brings to data set, it brings to our overfitting and underfitting, and basically overfitting can refers to data redundancy. So it means that we have uh, what means uh, we are, what we are calling saying data redundancy. It is about having identical images uh, that bring little value to our data set. Um, and this, uh, having a, a lot of uh, similar cases, let's say, or identical cases, uh, this is leading to a bad generalization of our AI model, and uh, which is, again, uh, based, uh, is uh, highly correlated with data set uh, quality. And uh, from this point, it is important to, to uh, reduce the data set, to optimize the data set, so to eliminate the redundancies from our data sets. And one more thing that, uh, of course, we can have good data set, but the, uh, our model capability doesn't allow it to learn. So there is, again, correlation between uh, model capability and the data set minimum and maximum sizes, let's say. So because if we have very good data, terabytes of data labeled, but our model doesn't have enough capability, it means that it will not be able to be generalized uh, because it has low or less uh, weights to keep this information inside it. Yeah. This is the idea under that. Uh, one more thing that uh, we need to, again, uh, want to mention why we don't want to have uh, redundant data. It is that because we have to label the data, it is uh, is uh, wasting our time, let's say. Uh, if we have a lot of redundant data, then we need to train on this redundant data, which uh, again uh, wastes our GPU 
uh, and our budget and of course time. And finally, we can have bad data set. It can overfit. Yeah. Uh, so it means that uh, we need to somehow uh, find out the reasons uh, and to reduce the redundancy from the data set. And uh, before, uh, so we understand for the point that data, data should be optimized, that the sets, uh, data set should be optimized. Uh, and uh, okay, now the, now the question, how do we need to select our data, right? Uh, in this case, we need to answer several questions like how well is our data set developed, uh, diversified? Uh, what is the percentage of redundancy there? And uh, how many rare cases are there? Because in real life, uh, it should contain edge cases as well, uh, which in our uh, data set cannot be available. But we need to somehow figure out what is there. Yeah? Um, there are main two approaches um, to tackle this uh, data set optimization problem. Uh, this it is based on active learning and core set selection. Now let's talk about active learning. Um, okay, so what is active learning is about? Uh, active learning is about that system learns uh, 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 online which samples it is needed how it is done. Uh, so as an engineer, I will label some, set, some, some small set. Uh, based on this small set, we'll train my model, uh, evaluate the unlabeled set, which is bigger, quite big enough, because I have uh, trained it on a very small set. Um, after that, uh, after evaluating, we'll uh, 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 query new samples to label based on some, some metric. After, uh, well, I will uh, talk about that metrics as well. Uh, again, I, uh, I will label that a new set of labels, new uh, set of samples, label it, add to my previous samples, and have uh, and increase my data set with the new labels, new um, uh, the training set, and again continue. And here we have a loop till some kind of criterion. Now, uh, what kind of, uh, what is our uh, querying uh, mechanism to select uh, the uh, new uh, samples from our unlabeled set? Uh, there are three of them that are um, used widely. It is, so, um, it is um, based on uh, least confidence. So when uh, we are evaluating on the um, unlabeled set, from that set, we are selecting uh, the samples that has low confidence. For example, let's uh, for example, if we have for example, yeah, we have two samples. Uh, one of them, let's say, it is about images. One of them is uh, prediction probability says that here is a cat with 32 uh, percent, and the, for, on the other sample, it is saying that here is a dog with uh, 45 percent. Then uh, we'll select the first one because on this we have a, a, a low probability. The second approach, uh, we are evaluating not only the high probabilities that are predicted by our system, we are evaluating the difference between high two probabilities. Let's say we are, it is called margin difference. Uh, so uh, in, uh, in the margin uh, the, uh, case, what we are doing? So now we have, again, the same scenario, we have two samples. One of them is saying that we have a 32% it is a cat and 30% it is a dog on the same sample. And for the second sample, it is saying that here I have a 20% cat and 20% uh, uh, this is a dog. As the difference uh, is high for the first sample, so is low very low for the first sample, so it for the system wasn't able to figure out which this is a dog or this is a cat. In the second case, it was able to somehow distinguish these uh, classes. That is the reason that we'll take the first sample. Okay, this is the other case. And uh, so uh, for in the margin case, we are evaluating two uh, classes, two uh, probable uh, predictions. And another case is called entropy, is based on entropy when we are taking the entropy of whole predictions. 
and highest entropy will be uh, highest samples with the highest entropies will be selected for the training. Uh, but, uh, and you see here that uh, with the help of active learning, we are reducing labeling time because not all the data set is labeled and uh, during uh, this process, we are selecting the samples based on some criteria, uh, which one we can uh, select for our, as a next step. Um, but uh, as this is an iterative loop, uh, it requires a lot of computational resources. We are iteratively training the same model. Uh, this is uh, active learning that uh, helps us to, re uh, to optimize our data set. Um, and the uh, next um, method is corset selection. The corset selection, we, uh, in the, in the uh, case of corset selection, um, we uh, have, we are, we are labeling the whole data set. And we work with uh, labeled data set, but in this case, our, uh, our um, uh, goal is to uh, select the small set from uh, the whole already labeled data set. Uh, this is again to, uh, so uh, we are not uh, reducing the labeling time, but we are, uh, with the course set selection, we have a chance to have better data set and uh, yeah, again reduce the training time. Um, in both this area that I have mentioned, both in active learning and in course set selection, a lot of research is done and some of them are uh, shown here. Uh, for example, here, uh, this is, these are the recent uh, uh, publications in these areas. Uh, it is selection via proxy proposed by Goleman et al. And um, what the, do they suggest to do? So uh, they suggest instead of you training our whole uh, heavy model, they suggest to uh, uh, use proxy models and uh, remove the hidden layers, most of the hidden layers, and train on, on that, um, train on based on that proxy uh, models. Uh, with this, they have obtained that even though the error rate is very high because the model is reduced, the hidden layers are removed, they say that um, even with this mechanism, it is possible uh, to select, uh, uh, to do quite good data set selection, and this, a method they have used both for um, uh, active learning and both for uh, um, course selection, the same methodology they, uh, that uh, they are proposing. And uh, the other uh, that, one, uh, that is uh, shown here, it is deep learning on data diet. Uh, they are asking question how early we can find out the samples uh, that we don't need. How early we can find that samples. Um, the idea is there that we can find the samples during the training and um, uh, if we can evaluate the learning loss, the difference, norm, uh, L2, L2 difference between uh, predictions and uh, ground truths, and based on that information, select uh, the data that uh, is needed. And also they are connecting this with the other uh, thing that was done, it is that uh, another research has been done and they, they say that um, uh, there are some samples that during the training are uh, continues to be well uh, detected and even, uh, and, but the, in, during in training saying they also notice samples that are forgotten. And they say if, uh, as uh, they have a correlation, uh, found a correlation between these between this forgotten uh, samples and the quality that they bring uh, to the data set, they found that uh, as they are forgotten in early stages, it means that they don't bring enough um, value to our data set that, and we can remove these uh, samples from our data set. Uh, okay, so um, we, it means uh, that uh, in order to optimize data set, we need to have some kind of metadata. Uh, the metadata can be defined by us. The sampling can be done by this metadata. Also, another research was done that uh, produces quite good result. It is based on random sampling methods, so randomly objects, uh, samples are uh, taken. And also, we can do it manually. Um, but 
You want to mention that, um, for example, in case of uh, when, when we work with videos, uh, in this case, uh, we uh, are um, we have to have uh, the um, uh, redundant data because we are extracting uh, frames for the video from the video. The source is the same, and there are sequences in the videos, and we need to tackle this problem when we are working videos. This is very important there. And when we are working with, you, with videos, for example, with frames from the videos, we can use hash functions because hash function, functions are good for that. We can also use um, the other technique that also the previous techniques that I mentioned, we can do uh, take uh, feature extraction uh, with TSNE, UMAP, PCA, and uh, DNN also. And also we can analyze uh, photometric properties of, of, for example, in case of uh, images and videos. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the hash functions uh, from now I would uh, uh, more be focused on uh, classification and detection tasks. And um, for example, the hash functions, um, you know, that these are robust against changes in brightness, contrast, and gamma corrections, compressions. Um, this is the problem with hash functions. And not, this is not a problem, but whatever. This is uh, the pr uh, case with the hash functions that they are robust against that changes. Um, but, uh, and these are good for selecting uh, identical images, identical um, samples, yeah? Uh, the other f a problem that we can have with hash functions is uh, that um, when we work with big data, uh, we can uh, have collisions in hash values. Uh, but in our case, we used to work hash functions, for example, for per each uh, video to, extra, to extract the identical, to remove the identical uh, frames for, from the, our data set. And it is uh, quite useful. Um, the other thing that we can do is uh, we can uh, remove identical, uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, we can uh, remove similar images uh, so with the hash functions, we are able to remove the identical Im images, but with uh, clustering, for example, we can uh, remove similar images. Uh, so uh, here again, we can use PCA, HOC features, uh, TCNE, uh, and also extract uh, from uh, deep neural networks, uh, extract features from the deep neural networks, and then run clustering. Uh, evaluate our, our clustering method, uh, and finally, with this clustering, uh, from these clusters, remove the uh, similar uh, images that we have noticed there. Uh, here again are shown uh, several researches that are uh, done uh, for um, a computer vision uh, community, basically. And the uh, last one, uh, semantic re redundancies in, in image classification data sets. Uh, they show that 10% uh, of the data sets are not needed for CIFAR 10, CIFAR 100 ImageNet. Uh, the idea is, uh, their idea is that uh, uh, they are evaluating the semantic space. Uh, what, did they, what do they do? So uh, they suggest to uh, train uh, the whole data set train on ResNet, um, uh, and uh, from the uh, ResNet uh, extract uh, uh, feature vectors. Uh, based on that feature vectors, they are creating uh, agglomerative, they are doing agglomerative clustering based on cosine metric and finding the difference. And uh, they, the clusters ne needs to be maximally to have, need to have maximal distance. Uh, what, uh, and uh, with this, they have obtained that, um, here are some, uh, this here is a graphic that shows that uh, basically, uh, for example, you see here, they have um, reduced uh, the data set. This is for CIFAR 10. They have reduced the data set up to 55%. And uh, here is um, result of the uh, well, uh, train, uh, training set, uh, sorry, testing set for uh, when the uh, sampling is done based on round, uh, random subsets and when here is done based on semantic uh, clustering. 
Uh, and you see that uh, after some point, uh, there is a big difference. And for example, in case of uh, when the data set is 90% from CIFAR, so 10% uh, is reduced, they have the same per percentage uh, or maybe better um, as 400% of data set. So it means that 10% can be reduced from the data set. And with this method, they found that it is better uh, then doing random sampling, uh, random selection from uh, the data set. Um, so, uh, we, uh, uh, while we're working uh, on uh, development of our uh, platform, we're doing, reading all this kind of research and asked ourselves uh, whether it is possible to um, use uh, the meta information extracted, uh, photometric meta information extracted from the images. Um, and um, let's say, as we say, okay, now let's see how, what is the distribution. We know that in case of uh, image process, uh, image classification object detection, the brightness uh, has high impact on the quality of the prediction. And we wanted to figure out what is the distribution of the brightness and uh, how it can be useful to reduce our data set, whether we can use this kind of information that we have uh, to reduce uh, the CIFAR 10, for example, data set. Uh, here you can see the CIFAR 10 brightness distribution. You see that it is uh, uh, quite close to Gaussian. The skewness, uh, skewness and courtesies are shown here. Uh, here are shown um, both, uh, just a second. Yeah, I have done double. Uh, here is uh, for um, CIFAR 10, uh, you know, maybe you know, it can contain 10 uh, classes. It is 32, 32 images. Uh, each of them contains uh, 5,000 samples. And uh, the distributions are close to, brightness distributions are close to Gaussian. The same is for uh, the uh, next uh, five uh, classes. Yeah, and this is uh, shown for the training set. For the validation uh, set, uh, which is a thousand, uh, which contains a thousand images per class, we see that, uh, this, 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 again, distributions are uh, again, close to Gaussian. And uh, for example, mean values are very close. In case of airplane, we have um, 160.5. And uh, for the testing set, the mean value is 164.6. In case of CAT, the means are identical. Um, mean is, uh, for the training set, it is 131.5. And again, for the testing set, it is again the same value. The similar pattern uh, we have noticed uh, for the, uh, the other uh, next uh, five uh, classes. And uh, we want it, uh, as we have read the article that says that 10% uh, is enough, uh, it can produce the same quality uh, as um, the 100%. Okay, we said let's now remove this 10%, keeping the balance uh, of the data set uh, per each class. Uh, and um, we have here, here are our histograms of the brightness. And uh, we have cut off uh, uh, from the highest frequencies. Uh, the highest frequencies have been removed from the data set randomly. Um, again. Uh, for all, uh, from all labels, yeah. And uh, we have obtained, uh, the, we, we have evaluated our uh, reduced data set based on VGG16. Um, we have uh, both 190% uh, data sets. We have trained uh, with the same learning uh, rate scheduler, with the same VGG16 parameters, hyperparameters. And uh, this is average uh, values, uh, so, and uh, obtain the same uh, accuracy for the data sets. For, yeah. This is all, thank you.
Hi. Is it okay? Uh, so you talked about hash functions and uh, for images, and I was wondering what kind of hash functions have you, you know, used or you know, they have been using. Uh, if you can elaborate on that a little more. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks. Thanks for the question. Um, uh, we have used uh, uh, wavelet-based uh, hash function and also uh, uh, using average average uh, uh, hash function um, so but uh, if you would like we, I can provide several hash functions and you can check which one works for you better um. Based on what criteria is some of the uh, core set selected? Um, core set, uh, it, uh, it depends. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of different cases that, um, so it can be, uh, for example, the learning rate, that uh, um, so learning um, error rate uh, uh, that we are getting, uh, or it can be, um, Mm. Uh, again, as I said, well, in the previous example, they were evaluating the clusters, uh, the difference of the, how their distance is kept within the clusters, uh, uh, to reduce the clustering uh, size, let's say. Uh, this is another example that, we are, that uh, they have done. And um, for example, how much impact, uh, if they are adding and removing, uh, so they're checking the impact of, uh, the, uh, the, of this sample, batch of uh, samples on the data set. Um, well basically, it is done based on clustering in most of the cases. It, they are doing clustering and uh, the idea there is to reduce cluster size, make it more, um, distance, uh, the increase the distance between the uh, cluster size. Basically, in a case of uh, corset selection, the they we're using clustering. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>